everybody, I am Nico D. So today I'm back with the RK3399. So Panfrost has matured a lot more since the last video that I made about it. So the re-review video of the Rockpi 4. Then only Supertox card worked well, but now a lot more games are working well. It is perfect yet, but it is good enough to make a good Linux gaming distro. So I am using the images from Bob's for this. Bob's create images for every TV box, but also for SBCs. Now he has made an image that works on all rock chip boards, on all all winner boards and on all M logic boards. So one image fits them all. So that is very good. These images are also built with the mainline kernel 5.4 or even 5.5. So for this I am going to use 5.4. This works on every RK3399 board. If it's a TV box or if it's an SBC, it should work. So best to use Bionic. I have written a script to install everything that is necessary to make Panfrost work. So to install the MESA drivers and the DRM drivers. So I will show you how to use the scripts. I will show you where to download everything. I will show you how to install the image. So here we go. So to download Bob's image, we go to the Armbian forum. There we go to TV boxes and here we have single image for Rockchip, Amlogic and All Winner. So here the Yari, here 1911.3, there are all the newest images. So as you see this is with the kernel 5.4. Be sure to choose this one, this one works the best. Do not download a default kernel image, this will not work with those, only with 5.4 or 5.5 and only with Bionic for now. So download Armbian Bionic 5.4 desktop. Once downloaded you unpack the image. So in Windows you can use 7-zip for this. I am doing this in Linux. So to do this in Linux, this is how to do it. Once that is done, we can write the image to our SD card. So in Windows you use Etcher or Win32 Disk Imager. I am using GNOME Disks for this. To make this image work for your device, there are two files that need to be adjusted. So the first one is uenv.ini. So here we have to make it point to the right DTB file. So I am using the rockpy4 for now. So let's see in the DTB folder. So here is the DTB file that we need. So I'm gonna copy the name of it and I'm gonna paste it here. And now we have to do the same for a file that is inside the ext linux folder. So open this file and again make sure it points to the right DTB file. If you use an Amlogic board, then you will have to put hashtags before the Rockchip part. But here for me it is ok. So save these files. And now you can boot. The first boot will take a long time. Just wait until it boots. So after a few minutes you will be greeted with this window. So the username is root. And the password is 1234. Again 1234 here and then two times a new password. And continue creating your account and you can log in into the desktop. Now all we need to do is just download the script and install it. So to download it we again go to the Armbian forum. Here we go to research guides and tutorials. And there go to build Armbian with Panfrost. So go down for this comment. Here is the file we need and also the instructions how to use it. Just click on the file and download it. And again unpack it. So here is the script, so it is very easy to use. So just go into the directory panfrost and here you type sudo dot slash install panfrost dot sh. It will first update and upgrade your system, then after a while it will ask for a choice. Just choose install all. It can take a very long time before everything is finished. It all depends on your internet connection and if you are using an SD card or eMMC. Now that is done we can start installing games. So I'm gonna first install Super Tux Card, Extreme Tux Racer and Nexus. 
all 3DS game work well with Panfrost. Panfrost now uses OpenGL 2.1, this will go up to OpenGL 3 in a while, so expect a lot of improvements in the coming months. So now let's start Super Tux card. So as you can see it is using the Panfrost driver with OpenGL 2.1. So this is great. So I'm gonna set it to full screen and 1080p and let's see how well it runs. So as you can see it runs very well, the frame rate is between 20 frames and 32 frames. This isn't great but this is with OpenGL 2.1, we can expect it to improve a lot with OpenGL 3.1. Here is Nexus. So this is at 720p, but it runs ok. I love this game, I played it a lot on the Nvidia Jetson Nano. It runs better on the Jetson Nano of course. The drivers for the Nano are OpenGL 3.1, but this can also improve for the RK3399s when Panfrost improves even more. PlayStation 1 games now work perfect on the RK3399. We can even use some scaling. So these are the settings that I'm using. So here is some Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 gameplay. I've played it for hours. It's great to be able to play it on the RK3399 in Linux. This the Nvidia Jetson Nano couldn't do. Another game that runs well now is Extreme Tux Racer. So this used to be a big mess with textures. There are still some little bugs in it, but it is now playable.
how the last game Assault Cube. So this still has got a big bug in it. The bug is the other players are see through and you cannot hit them with your bullets. So the only thing to do is die. So as you see now the RK3399 is also a very good SBC for gaming in Linux. You can play a lot more games on it if you compile them yourself for OpenGL 2.1. Salvador Liabana from Pileup will show a lot of games that are possible to run on the RK3399. So also watch his channel. So that's it for today. I hope you all liked my video. Thank you all for watching. See you all later. Bye.